Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another house project. So today we are talking all about the Lulamay. So my house is the Lulamay by Buccaneer. It is a manufactured house, which means I purchased it from a dealer. It was completely constructed off site, then brought to my land by truck and put together. Um, if you've been here for a minute, you probably have seen that because I videoed the entire process for you all. I will leave that entire playlist for you down below if you want to go back to the beginning. But when I purchased this house about a year and a half ago, and I started doing this video series, I also started collecting your questions. So I think there's like a main six videos on the whole beginning of the process up through my two month update, which was my last main maybe video, I guess about my little Lene before I started doing just decorating videos. So I've gone back through those first six videos and I've taken all of your questions and put them into a spreadsheet and I'm going to just sit here, read the questions and answer them for you. So little Q and A with all of y'all. Thank you for that. Thank you to everyone who asked a question. Now of all the questions, I think I ended up with 30 or 40 actual good questions that could be answered, quite a few of them were the same. Um, how much did it cost? And why do I not have footers? You guys are very concerned about these two things. The price one I get, the footers I don't get. I've explained it millions of times. Y'all don't like to read. I get it. It's fine. That's why we're doing it this way. I'm going to answer the question. You don't have to read any. So let's go ahead, I guess, and start with those two questions. How much did it cost? Well, y'all, that is a loaded question. So when I purchased this house, um, obviously it took me about a year to decide I wanted to purchase this exact model. It's a Buccaneer home, which means there are plenty of other blueprints. This house, there's a slightly bigger version of this house. There's um, very similar versions that have different layouts or different color combos. After all of that research and looking around my, my town with a realtor at just regular stick belt houses, I settled on this model. And then I went to three, four, five, six different dealers all over the area and I spoke to each of them about quotes. And at every single realtor, not realtor, every single dealer, I received a different quote with a different price on how much the house costs. All the way down, the cheapest quote I was given, and this was a year and a half ago, was 98,000. And that was a special for a holiday. I went back to that same place, um, was say two months later, and it was up to 110,000. So most of the places that I went, it was in the 110,000 kind of range all the way up to 140. And this was a year and a half ago. I purchased my house right before all the lumber prices started going up, the housing prices started going up. If I called those same six dealers today, I can guarantee that price is higher. I'm not sure this, I love this house. I'm not sure this, this house is worth higher. That's something you have to decide. Um, but I had a set price when I sat down and I did my budget. I had a set price that I could afford every month. 140,000 wasn't it. Um, and so I spoke to every single dealer in the area until I found one who was willing to work within my budget and with my down payment. And that worked really well for me. Um, there are a few other questions along this line that we will get to. Um, things like, are there hidden costs or what else does that include? And we'll get to that. But as far as the overall price goes, it's not going to be a set price. It is a range. Every single dealer can set their own price based on the profit margins that they have um, and what their market can handle. So since I live in Alabama, the closer I went to the coast, to the beach, those dealers were the ones with the higher prices because their markets at the beach could handle that price. The further up the state I went, where I finally ended up buying my home, um, the cheaper those prices were um, because those markets couldn't quite 
handle those larger numbers. So my best bet for you when it comes to price is shop around. Don't take the first price that you um, are given and keep working until you can find someone that's going to work with you because there's a big difference between the first place I went who they really did not care about me and about what I was looking for. They just wanted to sell me a house. And if I did not want to pay their price, then there was another person right behind me who would pay that price. And the place that I finally ended up going, that was very friendly and ended up, you know, didn't mind sitting down and answering all my questions, didn't mind working with me. Um, that's the kind of place you want to go because this is, it's a manufactured home, but this is a big purchase. And if you're like me, you've saved up for quite a few years to make this purchase. Make sure you're working with the right people at the right price. And that's what I have to say about that. Second of all, why don't I have concrete footings? Why don't I have a cement foundation? Well, y'all, that's because I'm not planning to leave this house here forever. But even if I was, this specific lot, you can see, has a grading issue. Now, before I put my house here, there was another home that sat here that was bigger than mine for 30 years. So this home, this lot had already been graded. Um, now, when I decided to, to rent this lot, my home was different dimensions than that home. So the place that I purchased my, my home from, the dealer came in with a bulldozer and they graded the ground for this specific home. And that was included and my purchase price was the setup and delivery and the pad um, construction. So they leveled everything with the bulldozer. They left it for a couple days. And then when they brought the home in and set it out, they also left it for a couple days. Now that video for the delivery was all in one day and the home was delivered in one day. The home was not set up in one day. It took an additional three weeks of working with the land for it to settle, of putting in cement footings, of adding in actual block footings that are to code for my home to actually have it set up. And then after that, we had to have the entire thing inspected before we could put the skirting on, whether that's a vinyl skirting or a brick skirting or a foundation, whatever you want to do, before you cover that bottom of the house, you have to have inspected, not by a manufactured home dealer, but by the actual state. And so someone from the state came out and they inspected everything to make sure it is up to code. And that is, I have to imagine, standard across the board for all states. I can't imagine there's one with a new home purchase that does not have to be inspected. Could be wrong, at least for the state of Alabama where I am, if you purchase a new manufactured mobile or modular home, it does have to be inspected before you can finish the setup and before you can move in. So by the time my home was delivered, I did a video for y'all of the walkthrough of it on the lot of the manufacturer. And then I did a video for y'all when it was delivered it was about a week from the time it was delivered to the manufacturer's lot to the time that it was placed on my land and then another three weeks of setup before I was able to move in. So four weeks from delivery to move in and then it was about four months from when I purchased it to when it was delivered. So all in all, we're looking at about five months from start to finish, everything up to code, everything inspected, everything okayed, I was allowed to move in. That's not bad for an overall timeline of building a home. Okay, so that's the main two questions. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over all of those because <laughs> I'm looking here and I have so many questions. How much was it, Noreen? Did I miss the price? How much? <laughs> By Ima. Dwindle Fodge says, didn't see anyone ask about the price. I had answered that question many, many times in the comments, but now you, now you know, ask around, don't, don't be set with the first one. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next question. All right, so question number one from Miss Kelly. Are you still living in the home? Cost, by the way, beautiful, beautiful. There's a bunch of hearts. Is there anything you would change if you could? Okay, 
Obviously, I'm still in the home. Like, I'm in one of the spare bedrooms right now. This is my office. My other spare bedroom is a guest room. I will link below. I've done just a home tour, just a straight up, like, walk through the house. And then I'm also going to be doing a walk through of how everything's holding up over the last year and a half. All the finishes and appliances and fixtures, as well as a walkthrough of all the things that they came out to fix, how those are holding up, and is there anything else that needs fixed. So that's a few videos. I will link those all down below. But yes, I am still in the home, been here for a year and a half. And if you just want a blanket statement, I'm loving it. Obviously, this is not a sponsored post, although if anyone ever wants to sponsor Lee, gift me a house. I'm in, just so you know, just so you have my official answer. All right, so I've written down a couple notes on what I would change if I could. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I did put in a note here that, and it didn't know to the price question earlier. When they give you that base price, say the 98,000 or the 110 or the 140, you need to ask what that includes. So for me, my base price of X included setup and delivery and included a set of steps for the front and the back and included the setup of water or the hookup of water and sewage did not include the setup of electricity. I knew that from the beginning, but if you don't know that, that could be considered a hidden cost. Um, on addition to that, the way the Lula May or any manufactured house is set up is there are what's considered upgrades. So for example, um, if you wanted, I don't think you could see it, you might be able to, but the air returns in the ceiling instead of the floor, that's an upgrade. I wanted all of mine in the ceiling because that really helps with not only the air throughout the attic, but it just lets you put your furniture wherever you want on the floor because you're not worried about blocking an air return. I also wanted like ceiling fans. I live in Alabama. I don't want my air conditioning bill to be $8 million. So I added an, a ceiling fan in the living room and the master, which are the main two rooms. Um, that is considered an upgrade. I had the little hallway desk that you can see on the blueprint turned into a closet for storage because my one complaint about this house is that there is, for all the cabinet space, there is not a lot of storage space unless you're going to use the two guest room closets. For me, I can do that. If you were living in this home with a family, you probably can't do that quite as much. Um, yeah, and so that's just a few examples. But all of those upgrades, for me, when I spoke to them, I have a list, I did a whole, I did a whole video, I'll link that below, of what changes you can make to a little May and what changes I made. I think there ended up being something like 25 changes I made. Every single one of those could have had an added cost. Um, I was lucky, the place I was working with, they didn't charge me anything for all of those upgrades. The price they gave me for X was the price I paid at the end of the day, and all 25 of my upgrades were included. One of the other places that I went to had quoted me $130,000 for the base price, and all of those upgrades that I wanted, it took me to like $160,000. I didn't go with them. <laughs> Another gal um, down in Florida that I've been talking with who also bought the Lulamay only ended up doing three upgrades because they were charging her specifically for each upgrade. Um, so that's something that you may need to know. As far as if there's anything I would change, there are a few things. More like upgrades that I would have taken if I'd known about, but I didn't know about them. And I read through the whole upgrade list on the Buccaneer website. Um, and if you ask the dealer, they should be able to go over those upgrades with you. But there are still things out there that they can do that I just didn't know about. For example, the master shower has a rain head. That's great. If I had known that you could get the rain shower with an addition of a handheld sprayer, I would have totally done that. I did not know that that was an option. 
that lady in Florida actually told me that was one of her three upgrades. And I was like, why did I not know about that? So I'm probably going to do that myself, but it would have been much easier just to have them do it. Um, you can also add the upgrade of a backsplash in the kitchen. I probably would have done that, but I don't know that it's necessary. It's just pretty. Um, the only other things I would have changed was I really do wish I had added a metal roof instead of my shingles. The shingles are fine and I have added two solar fans in the last year to help bring heat and moisture up out of my roof and into the atmosphere um, because I am directly under trees. And that helps a lot with the moisture. I don't want mold and mildew on my roof, but those, they weren't cheap fans, but they weren't expensive. A metal roof would have been way more. If I was going back to the beginning, I probably would have just done a metal roof from the beginning. I also would have really liked to have added a light in the guest closet and my hallway closet. The one in this bedroom, this is bedroom number two, my master bath bedroom, obviously closet has a light. The one in this bedroom does, but the smallest bedroom, which is my guest room, does not have a light in the closet. I did not realize that. I just thought all the closets would have lights. I would have liked a light in those. Also a little nitpicky thing in the laundry room, my washer and dryer are stocked like this. And the dryer vent is over here. So they've had to hook it up all the way behind. I would have much rather had the dryer vent behind the dryer and then go through the wall to the outside vent. Um, that would have made the vent exchange a little harder, but it was possible. I did talk to them about it. I just didn't realize it was needed at the time. Okay, so that's what I would change. Hope that helps. All right, so then Shelly asks a very similar question. Would love to know your likes and dislikes and what you would have liked different. Thanks if you can. So I've already said what I would change or what I would like different, but as far as the likes and dislikes go, I really, really like the wooden beams. So in the living room and the master bedroom, you have the option of adding wooden beams on the ceiling. They are um, an upgrade, mine were included. Gotta find somebody who does all this included stuff for you because it's great. <laughs> Such a big difference. Um, but because it is a manufactured home, it comes in two parts and those wooden beams cover that seam. Now there is a similar thing on the floor that's flat that covers the seam and the floor. And that's easy enough, you can just put a rug over it, okay, covered. But I've seen it without the wooden beam and that seam in the ceiling to me is way more noticeable. Covering it with the wooden beam adds a little bit of an architectural detail and it makes it to me completely unobvious that we are joining two parts of the house together. I like the look of the wooden beam way more than if there was just a seam and my ceiling. So if I had to pick one upgrade, that would be maybe not the top of my list. I think the hall closet would be the top of my list, but that would be probably option two that I would want. Okay, let's see. Also, <laughs> if you've ever seen the living room, there are so many windows in this house. Like my living room alone has three windows, then there's four in the kitchen and two in the, well, two over the sink and four in the dining room. But that's all one room, which means there's nine windows in that one room, which is great for natural light. Like I can open all the windows. I feel like I'm outside. That's great, makes you happy. But A, I have to clean them. B, I don't have more wall space. And you know, I know you guys think I have cluttered junk on house. You don't have to live here. You're not invited. I live here and I love my stuff and I love my art on my walls and I would like a few more walls to put things on. I don't know that I would sacrifice windows for them though. So that's a, that's the only thing I'm not sure I like or dislike is the windows sacrifice wall space. I do love the thermostat. So the thermostat that comes standard with the Lulumay 
is programmable, which means I can program it to, I want a high of 70 and a low of 64. Um, and it kind of can tell what the temperature is and go according to that. But even more than that, what I like is there is a, a feature where if you just walk right up to it and you drag the temperature to wherever you want it, say it's set at 62 and you come inside and you're freezing and you just want to warm up the house a little bit till you acclimate, you can slide it up to 70 and it will stay at 70 for three or four hours and then it will go back down to your pre-programmed temperature. Likewise, in the summer, my house is set at 72 and I've been outside gardening all day and I come inside and I am hot as hell. I can drag that bad boy down to 68 and it will cool me and the house off for a couple hours and then it will go back to standard. And I love that. And I have experimented with it to see if it really affects my electricity bill. I haven't seen any difference if I use that feature or if I don't use that feature. So thermostat is good for me, love it. The other thing that I really, really, really don't like is the thresholds to all the doors. So if you've watched my things they need to fix video, the back door's threshold was letting in so much water. Every time it rained, it was just flooding the entire laundry room. So when they came out, they adjusted that so the seal is much better. And now when it rains, my laundry room doesn't flood, which was the goal. But like last week, we actually had a tornado watch and it still, did still let some water in. But like, we don't have tornadoes that often. Unfortunately, even all the hall doors, while they do have those vents on the bottom, the threshold between the bottom of the door and the floor is about an inch and a half, which means the rings don't seal, which is probably up to code for something, fire or air or something important. But it means that um, air temperature, if I'm trying to cool off the bedroom, it all escapes. And even more than that, I live in the woods. So if you don't like rodents, plug your ears. But unfortunately, my pretty little tiny cat, Lily, passed away beginning of this month, which was heartbreaking. And I don't want to go into that right now because it will just make me cry. But I think as soon as she left, the mice got the update and they have tried to invest in the house um, and they can go under those thresholds. So it's fine. I've got it handled now. They're all out. They're mice free once again. But when I was seeing them, I literally was seeing them and they would run under those thresholds into closed rooms, creeping me out. Ugh. Okay, so the only other thing I would really like to change is I would like more storage. If you think I have a lot of stuff that you can see, don't be in my closets. <laughs> I'm a hoarder. I'm okay with that. I'm a sentimental pack rat. I also like my things, but on top of that, as a blogger, I have a lot of seasonal decorations as well as just props that I bring out for different things or for tablescapes, and I need places to put that. I also have a lot of what you call blanks, just things that I can use to make signs or tote bags or different projects. All of those things need a home. And so the hall closet, definitely my number one upgrade, super great. Most of my seasonal storage is in there, but I could use a little more storage. This house isn't really good at that. Not really anything, like there's nowhere else they could really put storage that wouldn't take away from the room sizes. So I suppose I just needed to break down and buy a storage shed. And if you think this is a lot of stuff, I have deleted so much stuff when I moved into this house. You wouldn't even believe it. Okay, on to the next question. Okay, so next question. Bree says, I am looking at purchasing this house, but I'm worried about being able to hear outside noises such as cars. Have you had any problems with this? So, I don't know that I'm the best person to ask, Bree. <laughs> I grew up as an army brat. We moved once a year for pretty much my entire childhood by the time I was 12. 
I have lived in 11 different states, so I am pretty immune to hearing outside noises like cars or trucks or motorcycles. I don't really hear them at all. In addition to that, um, I don't have a lot of traffic where I live right now. It's pretty secluded. And so there's, there's not much to hear outside at all. Um, I did hear quite a bit when I was living at my mom's house while I was purchasing this house. She lived right downtown. I could hear all the cars and trucks going past the house. It never bothered me, but I could hear it. Here, I really don't hear it. And I don't know if that's because I don't hear noises outside because there aren't as many noises outside. Um, but two trucks just went by and looking out my outside window and I didn't hear anything. I don't know if y'all heard anything, but I've had quite a few guests stay over. None of them have mentioned anything. I asked my best friend specifically because she stayed here with me for about three weeks when I moved in. So she's been here the longest other than me. And she is super noise sensitive. Like she will be able to tell you how many trucks pass by. And she said she did not hear anything. Um, it was good for her. Now she did hear helicopters may or may not be a problem for you. I don't hear them, but we're very close to the army base, which is why I live here. My dad was a pilot and he met my mom when he was here at pilot school. Um, so I don't notice the helicopters because I've lived on so many helicopter bases over the years, but they kept her up all the time. And if you live near a helicopter field, you'll hear them. Can't imagine that's a thing for most people. All right, so on to the next one. How much was it? We've already talked about that. Okay. Can you add three beds? Miss Peggy. So this is the Lula May. It has three bedrooms, including the master and two baths. One in the master, master bath, and the hall bath, which is actually huge. Like for a spare bathroom, it's huge. Um, it is 18, 32, 1,832 square feet. So it is pretty big. Now the Lula Bell is the next step up. It has four bedrooms, including the master. So three spare bedrooms and three bathrooms, including the same layout for the master bathroom and the hall bathroom. But then it also has that area with the little mudroom and a hall bath, which is like a half bath. It is 2,132 square feet. So yes, you can get for three beds the size the master. It is not the same house. It is just a slightly different floor plan. And if you go to Buccaneer, you can look up the two different floor plans. They're very, very similar. I, I don't remember if I said it in this video or if I said it in one of the other videos, but the Lula Bell, is just a little bit bigger. So you do have about 300 square feet more for the Lulabelle than you do the Lulamay, but adding that extra bedroom and the bedroom area still makes all of the other rooms a little bit smaller. So instead of like 12 feet wide, it's 11 feet wide. Instead of 19 feet wide, it's 18 feet wide. So that extra foot isn't a huge deal, especially if you need three spare bedrooms. Say you have three kids or your mother-in-law lives with you or you just need a whole room for your shoes. I don't know. I have an office. That's enough of a spare room for me. Um, it does exist. It is more expensive, the Lulabelle, than the Lulamay. When I was pricing the two, the Lulamay was about $30,000 more than the Lulamay was. For me, the extra room even with the others being a little smaller, was not worth the extra money, depending on how many people are in your family or what you want to use the extra rooms for, that might be worth it for you. I don't know. Okay, so speaking of the Lula Bell, Sarah, her next question, <laughs> the first sentence is in all caps, so I think she was excited. She says, ah! <laughs> I've been obsessed with this and the slightly larger house too. I'm guessing she means the Lulabelle. Like drive by the lot, even going out of my way just to see her. Yes, her. 
I want one of these for our forever home so that we're both artists so the model with the extra bedroom would be ideal. How was the process for you? Were there hidden fees? What about the quality? I'm sorry, I'm just so curious. Sigh. Lucky lady, congrats on your new home. Oh, and my idea with those bathroom windows was to stain glass or frost them. They even make removable options so you can change them out. Sigh again. I'm glad you liked my video, Sarah. I know when I was looking to purchase this home, it was very hard to find information from somebody who actually lived in one, which is why I decided to do this entire video process and try to answer as many questions as I could so that anyone else looking to purchase this home had a resource. Okay, and you know, when you say you went out of your way just to see her, I was totally that girl. Like I said, we went states over to see this home and the Lulabelle because nobody in my area had the Lulabelle to see them when I was looking. And I'll tell you, when I was, I was working in Dothan, I would literally take my breakfast some mornings and just go sit and stare at this home on the lot because I was wanted it so bad. I looked at many, many different manufactured house models, but there's something about this one layout and design wise. It just, I knew this was a house for me. I just had to decide I wanted to pay for it. Anyways, the purchase process itself was okay. The paperwork was very straightforward. The dealer actually was able to walk me through it as far as applying for the loan, um, deciding how much to put down, deciding all of those things. And I actually um, did the entire process with dealer A. I knew, like I said, I knew I wanted my budget to be X from the beginning. And I went in knowing that and talking with them about that. And they kept saying, okay, that's not a problem. We'll do budget X. And then we got all the way through the process. I got approved and they came back and said, well, we can do this house, but for X plus 30,000, we can't do X. And I said, I've already told you, I'm not willing to budge on my budget. This is my budget. If you can't work within it, I'm not buying a house from you because their goal was either to get an extra 30,000 from me or to move me to a less expensive house. So I went back to shopping around. I found another dealer and I said, look, I'm already approved. I have all my loan paperwork. I have a down payment. I just need someone who's willing to sell me the house for X. And they said, sure, come on up. So I went up, the, um, the mortgage company was able to transfer my loan to the other dealer. Even with the change in dealer, the paperwork was very straightforward. I didn't need a realtor. Um, if I had been purchasing land, perhaps I would have needed one. Since I was renting land, that was very easy. It was a simple switch of paperwork. They were great about explaining all my options. Um, I had a lot of questions, especially with all my changes. I think, like I said earlier, I made like 25 changes. Um, I went in the first day and at place B, when I said I wanted to pay X, that was the price I paid. They did not charge me extra for any of the upgrades. They did not come back with a hidden fee later on. It was just, this is X and that's what I paid. So there you go. Um, and like I said, that included the house, the delivery and setup, the skirting, the water and the sewer. I did have to pay for electricity. They were very transparent about that up front. And if they're not being transparent about these things, the biggest hurdle I found with working with big dealers is they do this all day, every day. So they expect that you just know what they're talking about. Unless you bought a bunch of manufactured houses, you don't. You don't know what to ask. You don't know what they're talking about. They say things like delivery day and you think I'll be able to move in the next day. And they mean delivery to their lot. And then they have to bring it out to you. So ask the questions. They will be transparent with you if you ask the questions, but they're not going to spell it out for you. I learned that the hard way. So, and if you have a question, leave it below and I will try to answer it. Okay. Let's see what else I had. Okay. Quality. So as far as quality goes, I'm pretty surprised. Um, I feel like with most homes these days, like my parents built a home a couple years before this, 
a stick home with an actual manufacturer. It is not a manufactured house. It's just a builder built it. And I can tell you from experience, like that house had just as many quality issues as something like this does. Just because it's a manufactured home or it's a stick built home does not necessarily mean one is better than the other, but there are some things you have to be aware of. Um, and going over with a fine tooth comb when they have to come out and do those fixes is important. So watch my fix video if you need some ideas of what to look for when you are doing your walkthrough. But it's a drywall home. It has two by four construction. It's very solid. It has shifted a little bit just as it's been settling over the last year and a half. They came out at five months to do all my fixes. Um, and since then, I do have a few new cracks. Um, I'll leave my fix update video below. But for the most part, very solid. Haven't had any problems. Yeah, cabinet surfaces, appliances. I haven't had any issues with those. Um, I know a few of the videos that I watched said that like the counters, the laminate was coming up or the floor was coming up in places. Haven't had any problems with anything like that. Not going with. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So the only thing I'm not in love with that I think could be way better quality or maybe just installed better is the baseboards. A few places in my master bath, in the laundry room, and in my master bedroom, um, anywhere they've come in contact with any kind of moisture, they are separating from the wall really bad. I'll try to show you. Um, and I think that could have been fixed if they had put more brad nails in along the way. But like when I was adding the gate, the farmhouse gates to my laundry room, I'll link that video. But I had to cut part of the baseboards to fit the door in next to my laundry machine. And I was like trying to, you know, use a little crowbar to move the molding out of the way so that I could cut it. Didn't need to do any of that. The entire length of the molding is about this long. It just popped right out. And it used single brad nail. I'm like, where else have you not used nails, damn it? I wish you would say damn it. So that would be my one complaint. Um, and it, it does make you wonder like, okay, if they didn't put any nails on this baseboard, where else did they not do stuff? But again, like I said, when my parents paid, quite a bit more for their custom home to be built, they ran into just as many problems. Unless you're out there with them building the house, unfortunately, you're gonna run into issues sometimes. And then, oh, so she's talking about the bathroom windows is the last part. So if you watched my, what changes can you make? The, the blinds and the entire home come standard, except for the ones in front of the bathroom tub. I don't get that, but they added blinds to the bathroom tub for me. They didn't charge me for that upgrade. So I'm fine with that. Um, she's talking about frosting them or staining them. And that would be a great way to make them private, but still let light through. My backyard where my dogs can go is right behind that bathroom. So not when I'm in the bathtub, but I like to have a look out that window and see what my dogs are doing if they're barking their heads off in the backyard. So I liked the blind option. Now I did frost both of my front doors since I picked the ones with the 16 pane windows. And I will link to that below if you want to see how to frost them because it was super easy and I love how it turned out. Okay, I think that was everything on that question. Last but not least, in this little lineup, I have everything separated out by which video the questions were asked on. Is Suzanne wants to know if you can get the Lula Mae in handicap. She says, my fiance is wheelchair bound. Can you get this home in handicap? I don't know. So I've learned the hard way when I'm moving furniture in and out that the doors are standard size, but they don't have a lot of give. Um, it was very hard to get even like a standard armchair through the doors. My grandfather was in a wheelchair. I don't believe he could fit his wheelchair 
through these doors. Um, so that would be my first problem is you would have to get larger than standard size doors. Second of all, well, the shower in the master, um, it does have an opening that you can walk right into. It is up a step. So that step would have to be all lowered to floor level. I'm not sure how that would work with the layout of the shower and flooding of the bathroom. So those would be the main two issues with whether or not this house was handicapped accessible or not. Um, the sinks obviously would all be too high for a handicapped person as well if they were unable to stand up out of their wheelchair even momentarily. Like my grandfather could stand up to wash his hands and then sit back down to wheel to the next place. Not everyone is able to do that depending on their abilities. Now, um, Buccaneer and the dealers that I've worked with have been great about making a lot of different just cosmetic changes. I would imagine they would have the ability to make handicap accessible changes, but I cannot confirm that. You would have to speak directly to the manufacturer. Um, and while you can purchase the Lulamay from many different dealers, I have heard that um, Clayton Holmes is one of their main realtors. So the Lulamay by Buccaneer from Clayton Holmes they have whole design centers where you can go and they will have all the layout changes, all the upgrades laid out for you so that you can really make this home custom. And that's one of the things that they like pride themselves on. So I would say try to find one of those centers and they are going to be your best bet to see if, if this could work for you or they may be able to tell you a different home that would work better. That's my best non-answer. Because I don't know. I would think yes, but but I don't work for them. I just like this house. I bought it with my own hard-earned money. Somebody, one of these comments, said that I was a spoiled brat. And I would like to know why. People on the internet, you know. I'm pretty sure spoiled brats get people to buy them their houses. They don't work hard and buy their own houses. So I'm going to be a spoiled brat. So I'm going to to come start buying these stuff. All right. We're getting there. Did I miss the price? Did anyone ask about the price? Yes. Refer to the beginning of this video. Shantia? Shamita? I'm sorry, darling. I don't know how to pronounce your name. She says, congratulations. Thank you. Any new updates since you moved in? Well, yes, I have quite a few updates headed your way because for the first time in a year and a half, everything's clean. So we're gonna film it all as quickly as we can. Up, up packing. Unpacking took a long time. Getting my decorations up took a long time. On top of that, the perils of, you know, working for myself and being a blogger means Sometimes I have to prioritize things like putting up a Christmas tree over unpacking the guest room. So that's a little strange, but it's how I make my living. So anyways, I am working on the updates now. I literally in the last month have unpacked the guest room, put away Christmas, um, cleaned and reorganized this whole office, finished my pegboard, um, cleaned and reorganized the entire laundry room. But there are lots of updates. If you haven't caught them over the last year, most of them are in this playlist. Things like adding my logo to this wall, wallpapering this wall, adding the pegboard. I built, mom and I built an entire cabinet. We built a cabinet in the laundry room. Custom cabinet. I designed it. That's cool. I'm very proud of it. Okay, so. I will link the videos just for the master walkthrough um, for the year and a half update. I will link the video for um, the update on all the things they fixed. And I will link the video with how everything's been holding up. But I think that's mainly the answer to that. Yes, there's lots of updates. Check the Lulame My House playlist for all the videos from start to finish. And um, if you want a video that is not there, leave me a comment down below. Maybe I'll film it.
Um, I will also leave a link down below for all of my outdoor videos because last summer, mom and I did so much work outside. We put in an entire flower bed, the front of my house where they bulldozed everything was already like a mess, but the grading there, like we knew if we didn't do something, water was just coming everywhere, gonna wash the whole house away. So we've planted grass, we've put out railroad ties, I've put in a whole pea gravel path with a really pretty pellet walkway that everyone was convinced wouldn't last five months. A year and a half later, still going strong. That's why you stay in it, people. That's why you stay in it. So I'm going to be doing a month to month to month to month to month update of my garden all summer this year because last year it was brand new there was nothing we went from little dirt to a whole landscape outside um, which was really fun but i didn't film it as much as i should have so this year i'm going to be doing a month by month garden tour and i'll leave that link below as well okay then Bill asks, he, well, doesn't ask, he says, Hi Betsy, first off, congrats on your new home. Thanks Bill. I'm interested in getting a manufactured house myself. I was wondering if you could shed some light on what you had to do as far as land when buying a manufactured home. Purchasing land would be one part. How are utilities, sewer, water, etc. handled? Did you have to do all of this yourself or was it coordinated by the manufactured home dealer? Okay, so this really depends on what type of land you're looking for. Now, when I went to, I, like I said, I went to several different dealers. The main two I was working with, the ones that went insane and wanted me to pay way more, and the people I ended up going with did have packages where I could purchase land, whether that was out in the country or within a mobile home park. Um, I could have purchased land either way and that would have rolled into my loan, making my home and house loan one thing. Um, unfortunately, in my city and the surrounding cities, they have a few laws against being able to place a manufactured home within city limits. And so you are looking for land in my area, at least outside of city limits, which is fine for me. I kind of like being out by the trees, by the forest, forest or woods and I'm on a lake so that's nice. Um, I ended up deciding to rent land because I'm going to be purchasing land and my budget for that is fluctuating and so I just decided I didn't like any of the land for sale at that time. I would rather wait and purchase the right land and then move my home at that time and I asked a lot of questions about that process. But if you would like to purchase land that they're able to offer you, you can roll that into your loan. Now, if you don't like any of their land, you can find a realtor and go around and look at other land. I did that as well. I looked at several properties, um, both developed and undeveloped, and I just wasn't in love with any of them, and especially the undeveloped ones. I think I was quoted about $30,000 would be the price to clear the land, add a septic tank, add electricity. That's quite a bit for something that you're not sure about. Now, if that land is where you want to be forever, then they can roll that price and the realtor can work with your manufactured home company into one loan. I did not do that. Like I said, I rented my land. Um, if you don't want to be in a park and you're looking with a realtor outside in the country, that's fine. You just have to be aware that while you'll have that extra cost, you also are probably going to have an extended timeline because now you're going to have to have that land worked. Let's see if I wrote any other notes. Nope, that's about it. So the price is just going to differ based on what type of land you're looking for, whether you rent something in a park, you purchase something in a park, you purchase your own land that's developed or undeveloped. But do not think that just because you've gone to a manufactured home dealer and they've offered you a lot in one place, because typically the two places I went to, they only offered you land in one place. They work with one company, 
if I liked the land, that company offered me three or four lots. Just because they're offering you that, that opportunity does not mean you have to take that opportunity. You can fund your own realtor. You can be your own realtor and go find your own land. They will work with you on that. And that is perfectly fine. So, all right, back to the foundation. I am curious about you not putting it on a foundation. I was under the assumption that guidelines for getting a loan on a manufactured home had to be set on a permanent foundation. I would like to know if this is correct information from Donna. Okay, Donna, I went over this at the beginning, but I'm just going to address it because she wants to know specifically about it having to be put on a permanent foundation. No. Now, it depends on your state and your city and your regulations for your specific area. So for my specific area, it did not have to be, and that is why I specifically picked a manufactured home, not a mobile home, and this specific spot, because I knew in a couple of years, I want to be able to move this home to my own land, or I'm going to put it on a permanent foundation. It is of course more stable on a permanent foundation. But at the end of the day, it, it just depends on your city. And that's something that the manufactured home place can help you with. And if not, you can go to city hall and ask, because when I first started looking, I was planning to purchase land in town and put it on a permanent foundation. And after going down to city hall, I found out that that is not possible. I cannot put this home within city limits, no matter how pretty it looks, doesn't necessarily look like a mobile home. It, it's not regulated, so there you go. All right, and then Miss V says, so cool. I think so too. Any idea how much it costs to move? I would love to move mine on a bigger lot at some point. So, I hate to keep ringing the same bell, but it depends on your place. It depends on how far you're moving it. It depends on how big your home is. It depends on who you get to move it. But, I did ask this question because I am planning to move my home in a few years. I was thinking it would probably cost around $30,000. Maybe because for some reason that's the price people keep quoting me for everything. Everything costs $30,000. Um, but when I spoke to the people at the manufactured home company where I purchased my home, they said they do move them um, all the time. It is not necessarily an issue. They said, depending on the size of your home and how far you're going, it's between 10 and 20,000. That could differ based on if you're trying to move it many states away. You also have to keep in mind that different manufactured homes are graded for different things. So you cannot just pick up any manufactured home you like and move it to the beach because it may not be graded for those type of elements in that situation and those winds and those rain and, and you have to have a home that's graded for that situation so if you are planning to move a home say from the mountains to the beach make sure when you buy your home it is graded for both places or you're not moving anything regardless of the price so there you go that's what they told me <sighs> okay on to the next one. Okay, so Rebecca says, congratulations on your new home. Thanks, Rebecca. My husband and I have been looking at the same home and was wondering how hard it is to get approved for a manufactured home. And what mortgage company did you use? Thanks. Okay, Rebecca, well, here's the thing. It wasn't hard. Now, I, Personally, I had several years when I was saving up my down payment on where I was working on my credit. There are... Oh, my dogs are playing in the other room. It sounded like knocking. Girls, come in here. There are, um, you know, limits on like how low your credit can be depending on how hard it is to get approved. If your credit is like at the bottom, 
You, you can get approved depending on who you work with. Whether you want to get approved or not is a whole other question. Your, your low credit may mean you have a sky high interest rate. Typically those two things correlate. The better your credit, the lower your interest rate comes. Mm -hmm. So it's not hard to get approved. They will approve you even if they probably shouldn't. But the guidelines of where you are on that approved list may not be something that you want to accept. So think about that when you're going to look at a manufactured home and into your lifestyle. If you want to accept a loan, that's going to give you more hardship in the future. I waited a few years. I made that sacrifice. Um, luckily, I was in a position where I was able to do that. Not everyone is. I understand that. So then when it came to mortgage companies, you have a few options. So you can go to a mortgage company like your bank. I bank with the same people here in town that I have for many, many years. Um, you can go apply for a loan through your own personal bank and then take that loan to the manufacturer company. That's fine. Or a manufacturer company will give you two, three, four, five. They had several different companies that they worked for, um, not for, with to approve loans. And they told me like, okay, so we have these five. This company is probably our best company, but they don't work with people under this level of credit. This company is going to be your best bet to be approved if you have low credit, but they're going to give you a giant interest rate. And they were very upfront about that. And then I could decide between those five, did I want to apply with a mortgage company, all of them? Did I just want to apply for one of them? Um, and what did I want to do? just depends on where you are in the country and what companies they work with. Luckily, I actually have um, an aunt who works in this kind of field and she was able to help me. So, when in doubt, family's great. James wants to know when did they do the footers? They should take a day or so to set up. I'm telling you guys, super worried about my footers. Like I said in that video, that was the delivery. It took a day. From that day, it took three weeks to set up. The footers themselves took three or four days to set up. Now, I tried my best. And if you go back on my Instagram, I have a whole story um, notification that's pinned on footage from that entire three week period when I could get out here. And you can see more of those kinds of things. But I, I was not out here every single day while they were setting it up, filming for you. I would have loved to be out here every single day. But unfortunately, at that point, I was still working um, outside of full-time blogging. And so I had to go to work. <laughs> but yes, it took a couple of days to set up. All right. Tank Texas says, how was the buying process? Did you need a realtor? I pretty much already covered that, but specifically about the realtor, no, you do not need a realtor. You can go straight to the dealer, work directly with them. The only reason you would need a realtor is if you are looking for land outside of what they can offer you. And in that case, you don't necessarily need a realtor unless that too handles land buying in your area. Miss Missy, ooh, that's cute. That sounds like from um, Young Sheldon. Or big bank. Okay, she says, can you tell me what the width and length are? It's pretty big. Nice. And she has some thumbs up there. It is 32 by 70. This house is big. It's a big house. Like I said, 1832 square feet. So it's large. It's it's bigger than a few of the stick homes that I've rented over the years. So one of the dealers that I went to it was literally the largest house that they had on the lot. Now, that was over a year and a half ago, so I'm sure that's changed. And I know the Lula Bell is bigger, so I know there's bigger homes out there. Um, not to mention, in the world of manufactured houses, this is technically a double wide. So you have a single wide, you have a double wide. There are triple wides, which is what they call when they have a bump out for a room or a larger front porch. So this is a larger home, mainly in length, but is not the largest one out there. 
Okay. Hero, H E big R O, says hi. I was wondering, do they leave the trailer with wheels underneath for support? No. <laughs> I kind of wish they could because that hooking and unhooking of the wheels is one of the main fees they said that is associated with moving the home but apparently that is not safe not to mention your house wouldn't be skirted properly so it wouldn't look right um, but if you didn't care about that they are not lady don't eat that i love my dogs but jeez she's eating some of my antique letter type pieces She's only five months old. Anyways, they do not leave the wheels under. It is not super um, safe, I believe, to do that. And when they come out to inspect your home, that is one of the things that the state inspectors will check for is that the wheels are gone, but is fully secured on the footings. So, no. Denise said, what about gas, electric, water, sewage? Assuming that is something you have to coordinate with the town. Curious on how to do that. Most of what I researched said it is extremely difficult to get. I'd love to do something like this, but there isn't much on how to successfully get the necessary permitting. You're right, there is not a lot out there on how to do that. And it was one of the most stressful parts of trying to figure this out when I was going around with the realtor looking at land. Now, when I was working with the realtor on the land purchases, um, they said it's not nearly as difficult as you think it is. Um, once you buy your land, you will contract with different companies to do those things, starting with clearing the land, then adding a septic, then adding in the gas, water, electricity. Um, I didn't go through with that purchase of it since I decided just to rent here and all of those things were already in place. Now my parents did it when they purchased their land and it was not nearly as difficult as um, as you think it is. It's just intimidating. But they simply contracted with a um, company that was able to come out and do it and then connect to the main line. But mainly like you would contract with the electricity company to come out and run that line and that would be a fee. And then you would have to contract with the water sewer department. They come out, they lay that line. And then you have to have your um, companies that you contract with so a skilled electrician specifically connect from the outsource to the home the actual manufacturer company of the house when they set it up and deliver it will connect from the sewer and the water to the home that's what my mom said when I asked her and they built a home on a mountain so everything had to be brought up the mountain um, much harder than where I am here and she said, once you find, you know, talking to that water and sewer company and talking to the electric company and getting it all set up, it wasn't nearly as hard as you would think. Okay. Paula says, you got the Lula May. Wow. I don't know if that's how she said it. That's how I'm reading. So who did the leveling of your land before the house came? The dealer. So the place that I purchased the home from brought out a bulldozer. They did all of the leveling and all of the grading work. That was included in my purchase price. Angela said, awesome looking home. Great job driving them in there. The drivers did such a good job. Like when I rented this land and the people I'm renting it from asked me, did I want to have any trees taken out? And I took out two large trees that were dead. The one to the right of my home that they had to keep going around was not nearly as dead. So I did not take that out and I kind of wish I had because it's going to die eventually, but I don't plan to be here when it dies. And I didn't want to have no tree shade because this is already the right half of my house is already the, the hottest part. And then all the trees on the left. Um, so I left one of the three trees over there up. Um, she says, I'm a little surprised that there's no concrete footers or something other than bare ground. Refer back to the original question, Angela. They put footers in. You guys are very worried about the footers. My house is not going anywhere. Promise. Okay. Let me check on those dogs.
Okay, so T says, I love your house. How long did it take them to set it up before you moved in? So going from the very start, when I ordered my house, they said it would be about three months. They told me, and this is where the confusion is, they said three months to delivery date. I took to mean three months till it was on my land and delivered to me ready to be moved in. That's not what that means. Don't think that. Okay, so three months, A turned into four months because nothing is ever exactly on time, okay? So then after four months, it was delivered to the manufacturer home company's lot, okay? And I did a whole video on it once it was delivered there. They told me it would be two or three days before it was delivered to my home. It ended up being a week or two. So a week or two later, it was delivered to me here on my land. And I videoed that whole thing. It was very exciting. And then from there, it was another three weeks for them to add in the footers, for them to make sure everything was square, to, for them to marry the two halves. It's a drywall house, so then they had to patch all the drywall. We did a walkthrough. Anything that wasn't quite right, they fixed. So it was another three weeks before I could move in. So to recap, four months for them to build the house. Another week with it on the lawn. And then another three weeks while they actually set it up on my land. So that's five months from start to finish. And they originally told me two to three months. So my advice is they're doing their best they're not trying to be deceptive, but when they say delivery date and you think, oh, I can move in the day after that, you can't, that's not what that means. Ask them specifically, how long until it gets delivered to you? How long from then will it be delivered to me? And how long from when it's delivered to me can I move in? If they tell you two months, double it. They tell you four months, double it. It's never going to go as quickly as they say. Okay. Seascape 185 <laughs> says, I was in live. I'm guessing they're saying I was in love. I was in love with this when I first saw it a few years ago. It looks beautiful, but please don't be offended because it's a question about the manufacturer, not you. Don't worry, Seascape 185. I'm not offended. It looks cheaply made as far as wood finishes. Is it real wood or what? Same with the doors and kitchen cupboards. How has it held up? Okay, so no, nothing um, as far as the finishes go is real wood. Now the manufactured, like inside the studs, that's real wood. It is two by four construction with a drywall finish. As far as like the floors and the counter and the wood beams, that is all a faux wood like laminate kind of substance. Now you could add real wood in those substances. It would be an upgrade charge. I have no idea how much it would be because I have one, two, three, four, five dogs and I did not want real wood. I've learned over the years that when you have an accident on real wood, it doesn't do as well as if you have an accident on laminate. So real laminate, they've held up beautifully over the last year and a half. But if you're comparing laminate to real wood, they're not the same thing. As far as looking cheaply made, it's hard to say. I mean, I've lived here for a year and a half. I've lived in 15, 16 different houses my entire life. And so I've lived in some really cheaply. My dad was in the army. I've lived in some cheap quarters. And I've lived in nicer homes, like the home that my parents built. Um, and I would say for the most part, everything is really nice. Now, like I said earlier, the baseboards to me are probably the cheapest thing. Um, it's hard to say. There's only a couple things that I'm really not happy with the finishes on, mainly like the trim. Even like I watched them when they came and did the fixes, they caulked everything and you can still really see where the things meet. Um, and that's just, I think how the trim is. It looks fine from afar, but I'm a detail oriented person. I can see it. 
Um, the baseboards, you can really see it. But as far as the rest of the finishes, I think it looks just as nice as almost anything else you're going to find in a custom stick belt home. Um, the doors are hollow, so if you do not want a hollow core door, you could replace those. They are a cheaper version of a door that you could get. Now the front and the back doors, they are solid, they are real wood. Um, but these are hollow. They do have that Craftsman, Shaker, whatever you call panel style to them, which I think makes them look really nice. They don't look cheap to me. Um, but, you know, everyone has their own opinion. All you can do is walk through it yourself and see what you think. Yeah, hope that helps. All right, call me Shelly. Okay, Shelly, your home is breathtaking. May I, thank you, Shelly. May I please ask where you got the wallpaper for your office? That's exactly what I'm looking for in a memorial room for a baby that passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry, Shelly. That's awful. It's always the worst. Um, this is my office. So this is the wallpaper in question. It is from Indie Bloom Designs. You can buy it on Amazon or Spoonflower. There's a catch. So Spoonflower is a little less expensive, which is great, but they do not allow returns. Amazon is a little more expensive, but they accept returns. So it is not the most cost effective wallpaper, but I was only doing one wall. So I think it's way worth it. Sometimes we don't know why I do things. But we, I mean me. Trying to find where I left off, I actually zoomed out. Okay. I think we're on the last question. I don't know if that's exciting or sad. I was having fun answering these. Leave more questions down below and I'll do another one. This is fun. Okay, so. Jace Gonzalez says, thank you for sharing updates on your home. You're very welcome. My husband and I are thinking about going this route in like one and a half to two years. Got to zoom out a little bit. There we go. Down the road. And it's really motivating to see others post about their homes and continue to share updates. So you can get a realistic idea of manufactured homes once they've settled everything. Yes. Love your home and the personality. You're so sweet. You guys are nice. Like, trust me, there's some not nice people, but for the most part, y'all are great. So thank you. And I also really appreciate those of you who come to my defense when the mean people attack. Because those little keyboard warriors, they forget there's other people on the other side of the screen. We're not robots. Can't wait for you to share more as you guys continue living in it. We live in the north so i would imagine the regulations wouldn't be too drastically different from y'all are there any regrets you have from purchasing this model are things you wish you would have added or asked about at all i really like the four bed two and a half bath lulabelle version of this for more room and slightly more storage okay so i've gone over a few of these things throughout such as if i have any regrets or likes or dislikes so i'm not going to really address that again um, but when I was purchasing this home, I think I've mentioned this before, deciding between the Lulame and the Lulabelle was a big decision for me, especially because I don't have kids right now. So I don't necessarily need all of the rooms for other people. I just need room for me and my hordes of things. Um, but eventually the goal is that we are going to move this house to our own land and use it as more of a vacation home for my entire family. And there's quite a few of us, so more bedrooms in that scenario would be helpful. But, yeah, the Lulabelle has a little more storage. It has an extra bedroom, an extra closet, a mudroom, and the extra half bath, but it's an extra 30 to 40,000. I decided for me that that was not worth the extra cost. 
Um, I could see if you had three kids or four kids or five kids, that extra cost would totally be worth it for the extra bathroom and the extra bedroom. For me, it wasn't. I think about it now that I've lived here for a year and a half and it's very hard to decide because it would be really nice to have an extra room. Not necessarily for um, guests. I have a guest room and not necessarily for this room, but for a storage slash photography room. And because as a full-time blogger, it would be really helpful to just have a permanent place to set up lights and my camera and my overhead camera and be able to do all of those flat lays and then have just shelves of my storage things for props and other things that I use every day for my business, let alone I do all of my resin pouring things out on the front porch. If I had a designated place where I could bring those in, let them dry, close that room, that would be great. But all of these things are extra. None of those things are necessary. I can clear this desk off and I take my screenshots here or my photos here. I can put all my resin things to cure in my guest bathroom, which is what I do now. I don't have guests 24 hours a day, 364 a year. So, I mean, would that be nice? Yes. Is it necessary? No. Is it worth an extra $30,000 to have a specific curing resin taking picture room? No, not unless somebody's gonna give me $30,000. It's my $30,000, no. I would rather spend that money on something else, <laughs> like a shed. I could buy a bunch of sheds for that. Regardless, I could buy a shed for like $2,000 to do all of those things in besides the pictures, keep doing that here, and that would be great. And so for me, that was the breakdown. Um, but all in all, that is all the questions. I am going to put this all into a blog post with all the questions and all of my answers written out so that you can go read those if that would be more helpful to you. Um, but in the meantime, if you have any more questions, leave them down below. Do you see anyone asking about the price or the footers? Feel free to answer them because I'm not doing it anymore. I've already answered it a bunch. That's how I feel about that. But I hope you liked this video. I hope you will go check out the rest of the playlist. I am still working, like I said, I filmed the other three videos, the walkthrough of the home, just for my home decor. I filmed the fix update, all the things that they came out and fixed, all the things I still need fixed, just a few there. They fixed almost everything, but that was six months ago, more things have broken. And, oh, how everything's folding up after a year. So putting those in the playlist, as soon as I get them edited, you will have links. And until then, I will see you next time. I will probably be out in the garden because it is March 27th. And on the 1st of April, I can plant annuals. Until then, bye y'all. So this is where I sit. And this, is why you hear so many dogs in the background. You guys just can't be good for the video, huh? Okay, you tell him, princess. Stretch it out. <laughs> Bye, y'all.